Urgh. Come on. Oh. The light is turning on, but nothing is happening. So obviously we have a problem within the keyless entry system. Let's take a closer look. So here we are on the driver's side, looking straight up. And beforehand, I did a quick web search looking for what this part looks like. And right here, this green wire, this is what I'm looking for. So where my thumb is, is the harness connector. Just press down, pull out. And I just want to test a couple of things to see if we have a wiring issue or maybe there's a problem with the receiver itself. Now testing the wiring is painless enough. We just need a digital multimeter. As always, I'll link all of the tools in the description box below. Now the reason why I want to check the wiring is to verify that we have no blown fuses. And since we're here, we can check some other things. So very quickly, black is our ground, and then yellow tends to be our power wire. So we can test both of these. The other two wires are most likely running to the fuse box or through the fuse box. So we can quickly check everything. So we're going to first check the black wire and we want continuity. That means we have a good ground. So on the multimeter, we have what looks like a Wi-Fi hotspot. And that is continuity. So what that means is when two points make a connection, we have an audible alert. So this I'm going to attach to any good metal point on the car. Right here is a metal brake pedal. Okay, actually, maybe I'll go to one of those fasteners up there. That may be a little bit better because this is probably coated. Okay. And then with the other lead, just touching right here on the bottom left is where that black wire is located. And we should have continuity, and we do. Okay, so we don't have a grounding issue. Let's check the power wire. So that's the third one. Looks like right here. So we need to turn on the ignition key. So turn on the ignition. Okay. And now on the multimeter, just switching to volts DC. And we should see battery voltage at that yellow wire. Okay, so let's see what happens here. And we have 12 volts, that is fantastic. Now, if you do not see a reading here, then most likely you have a blown fuse. I will show you that in a moment. Now, the last thing is checking if we have battery voltage when the ignition is off. Now, don't forget when you press your key fob to lock or unlock, the ignition is off, right? You're outside the vehicle, it's completely off. So one of these wires should be getting battery voltage with the ignition off. So it's either this red with the black wire or it looks like it's a gray with a blue stripe. I don't know which one it is. So same test, we're still on the volts DC setting. And let's see if we can find battery voltage. Again, the ignition is off. A little hard to do here with one hand, hold on. There we go. And yep, there it is. Hold on, let me make sure you can see this. So we have battery voltage. For sure, every wire is doing what it needs to do. So I have a problem with the receiver itself. Now very quickly, if you want to check the fuses, right here, we have a number of fuses. And you can check every single one unless you know precisely what you're looking for. Now. In order to do that, you really want the factory repair manual. You can typically buy them online for like 20 bucks. And in the manual, you will find which specific fuse controls the keyless entry. Now, I think that is super important. Spend the 20 or 30 bucks. That is nothing when it comes to just maintaining any vehicle. And you have the factory repair manual. This is what the dealerships use. Again, you can find them online typically between 20 and $30. So in this case, keyless system. Everything I need is right here where all of the fuses are located. Okay, you could do something like this you could do at home. Don't pay anyone to do, at least up to this point. And what I mean by that is, here is the replacement receiver. I've already removed the old one. Here's the one I'm about to install. Now the last step is coding my key fob to the receiver. Now I've done this before 
on another Acura years ago, so I don't have to go through that right now. I'm just going to do it off camera. If you want to see how that's done, I'll include a link. But every vehicle is different when it comes to coating. What I've seen typically is up to 2010 roughly, you can most likely do it at home. On the flip side, if your vehicle is just too modern, then you may need a locksmith, an automobile or a locksmith that, that has the capability to really talk to the computer and code your key fob to the computer. Okay, so every vehicle is different, but this, at the very least, you can do at home and save some money. So let's plug in the new receiver. I'll code everything off camera. Again, I'll have a link if you're curious to see how that's done on an Acura TL, an older one, at least the third gen. And now we can test everything. And now with the same key fob, it's programmed. I can unlock, lock, everything works fantastic. <laughs> 